Remember when we were preparing for March Madness? Remember when we were anticipating college baseball season? And it actually started and then stopped. Remember enjoying spring break and the fact that the weather was getting warmer before everything went into complete chaos? You remember not being able to find toilet paper? That seems like five years ago now. And yet, here we are in the midst of all of this constant change. Or if you want to go a little more old school, you remember life before the internet? Unfortunately, I do. Do you remember when gas was a dollar a gallon? I do. Okay, I'm old as dirt. But that wasn't that long ago, honestly. In fact, if anything, the last few months have taught us anything is that there is one constant, and that is change. The only thing that stays the same is that nothing will stay the same. Whether it be technology curves, or coronavirus, or the start of college football, eventually, or the start of school, just kidding, push that back another couple of weeks. If you're like me, you have struggled to plan stuff and to look forward, and then you go, okay, this date is set, now I can kind of orient my life, only to find out that date is not as set as you thought. But the, re- the funny thing is, we resist change. Many of us hate change at the purest possible level. We resist it. We don't want it to happen. In fact, just the way the church has struggled to go back to the way it was in March. Maybe you've struggled with that personally. I just want my life back to the way it was a few months ago. I just want to go back to that. There is something inside of us that makes us resist change. Partly it's because we're creatures of habit. You wake up in the morning, your coffee's not there, you're going to be a little freaked out because that's what you do every morning. School starts in the fall. College football games fall on certain Saturdays every year. It's predictable. It's a habit. It's a ritual. It's a tradition. And if the coronavirus has done anything, it's ended and blown up all of those traditions. And so we're like not sure what's happening tomorrow, let alone the next day. And so there's something inside of us that resists it. In fact, our brains are trained biologically to notice change as a protection scheme. This isn't the way it was tomorrow. That, that, in other words, change is actually a threat to us. It robs us of our sense of security. It robs us of our sense of predictability. And we think that means there must be a threat in the middle of that change. And so we do everything we can to keep things the way they are. Our brain starts to fill in the blanks when we get in the middle of habits. You've ever driven to work and not even remember making the drive? Because your brain has already put you on autopilot because it knows where the turns are. It knows where the stop signs are. It knows the path, and your brain disengages for a while, and you come to, and you're at work. That's a little scary thought. But our brain fills in the gaps when we get onto, ha- onto our habits like that. What's really interesting is the, whole, the work of the Holy Spirit is to actually change us. Moving on to perfection is a good thing. It's a good Wesleyan phrase, right? Our spiritual journey is to move on to perfection, to change, to grow, to mature, to form new spiritual pathways in our life is what we're all about when we talk about discipleship. So no wonder we resist spiritual growth. Now, it works that way, but the opposite is also true. And then what I mean by that is when we form a spiritual habit, that spiritual habit has that same power over us as all these mundane routine habits do. They become traditions. That's why you have your favorite pew in the sanctuary. And that's why there's a part of you that longs to be sitting in your favorite pew in the sanctuary. We are creatures of habit, tradition, who resist change, who don't like it. But the Holy Spirit at work in us is constantly seeking to change us into who God intended us to be. If one thing is true, is that the one constant in our life is change. If you have kids, you realize this. You look at an old photograph and you go, that was how long ago? Two years? This kid's twice the size he was and now he's doing everything he's doing. 
the one thing that is constant is change. The more we resist stuff, the more it seems to change on us. Have you ever been thrown into deep water and then you cannot quite reach the side or been in the ocean and can't see the land? It's completely disorienting. And what is your instinct? Your instinct is to clutch onto something that's stable, something that's lasting, something that's constant. But I want you to hear this in our devotional this week. And that's this. One thing that is constant in our life is change. But the one who changes us is constant. Think about that for a minute. The one thing that happens in our life all the time, and especially in the last couple of months, is that things change. And we might feel like we're in deep water and there's no way to reach the side and we're not sure where the stability is going to come from. We would love the routine of school and we find ourselves swimming in the deep water of things changing all the time. But the one who changes us is constant. Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The one who changes who we are, the one who transforms us, the one who's in the midst of our life, in the middle of all of this change and all of this chaos, has never changed himself. He's just as gracious. He's just as loving. He's just as forgiving. He is just who he's always been. And so if you feel like you're swimming and there is no side to hang on to, or if you're in the middle of the ocean and there is no land that you can see to tell where you are. If that's where you are in the midst of this coronavirus, push school, start back. College football, no college football. Are my kids going to be safe? Are my kids not going to be safe? Mask, no mask. It's chaos. And just when you think you've got a new habit and a quote-unquote new normal in these uncertain times, the one truth is, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the God that wants a relationship with us. He is the, the side of the pool that we can hang on in the midst of this chaos. He is the side of, he is land when we're in this ocean of being lost. You know, redemptive history is filled with people who have run from God and done different from God and pulled the Jonah thing and you want me to go this way? I'm going to go this way. We do that ourselves. But God is the one who is still wait, sitting there patiently waiting for us to get tired of struggling and swimming in deep water and to grab the one constant. Yes, he does want to change us. Yes, that's a little freaky because it means we might have to surrender control of who we are. But he has not changed. The Psalms talk about his love being steadfast, his love being sure forever. He is the Alpha and the Omega. His nature has never changed. And that is the one truth that we can cling to in the midst of, of all of this chaos. So if that's you this week, if you're feeling a little lost, a little overwhelmed by the chaos, in the water over your head, let me say this prayer of benediction over you. May you, even as you're swimming hard, discover the constant, steadfast, never-ending, never-changing love of God. May he fill your heart with peace. May he give you rest. And may he reveal himself as the one constant you need. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.